So, where are you headed? Hmm. Not the talkative type, eh? That's okay. Most people I pick up are just waiting for their turn to talk. Want a raisin? They're from my farm. Thompson seedless. Good raisins. We still farm more of those in California than anywhere on Earth. You want to know the clearest evidence that reality isn't real? Raisins and grapes, man. They're the same thing but they taste disgusting when eaten together. Obvious bug in the program there, right? Memory is a slippery thing. Think about when somebody asks you about this ride later, assuming you even know where you're going and get someplace where somebody can ask you. Hey, how'd you get here anyway? They'll ask you. Oh, I itched. And your brain will flash back for a second when you say this and it'll show you a frozen snapshot of yourself sitting in this car, talking to me like we are right now. But which moment will it actually show you? Will it be this one? Or this one? Or this one? We think we remember how people really were, how our lives together really were. But when we think back to them, even the people we cared about the most, all we're doing is snatching moments out of the air. Just grabbing another raisin out of the box. My wife. She's dead now, but you probably guessed that. Oh, thanks, but you don't look like you're doing so well yourself. Takes one to know one, right? I can always spot someone who's grieving along this highway. They usually stand on the road with a dazed look on their face and their thumb up in the air. No, I don't know you. Just know the type. My wife? If I'm totally honest with you, I don't really remember what she looked like. Remember everything about her. Just not her face. Some people have faces that are easy to remember. Doesn't seem fair. Sure. It's not as easy as people think. I'll give you an example. You think you're present in the moment? You've been talking to me for a few minutes now. What color are my eyes? Nope. Well, like I said when I picked you up, some people are just waiting until it's their turn to talk. 
Hey, kid. Do me a favor and close the window, would you? That's better. Now, where were we? What you got there? Just a matchbook, huh? I figured it must have been something important. Because the window is still closed. Not much profit in talking geography with someone who doesn't know where he's going or where he's from. But if you want to know, the trunk of this car is full of four bushels of raisins that I'm driving to my brother's place in intercourse. That enough info for you, Copernicus? Yep. Intercourse, Pennsylvania. You're not gonna believe this, but my other brother lives in Lampshade, Texas. I once picked up a guy who'd been to Czechos... Sorry, the Czech Republic. They've got some really weirdly named places over there, he was telling me. One place that means young celebrator of pain. The thing is, some of these places are 700 years old. I guess they didn't really know how to name places back then. You know, when I was a kid, my brother and I used to drive our parents crazy on long drives like this. Our folks wouldn't let us listen to the radio in the car. So we used to make up these songs about food on long drives to pass the time. We had this one with about 30 verses, each about a different kind of grain. There was this one time when we passed a billboard for this new kind of bread, Belach bread. In hell they have a hell a lot of bala bread. In hell they have a hell a lot of bala bread. In hell they have a hell a lot of bala bread. In hell they have a hell a lot of bala bread. Oh, oh yeah, that drove mom and dad crazy. Come on, join in. In hell they have a hell a lot of bala bread. In hell they have a hell a lot of bala bread. In hell they have a hell a lot of bala bread. In hell they have a hell a lot of bala bread. Actually, I'm beginning to understand my parents' perspective. Getting older is funny. It's like reading a book where less and less happens, but the writing gets better and better. Thanks. I got it from an app. It's this app with philosophical sayings. My wife got it for me, to make me sound smarter. Oh, she had a way with words. Yeah, well, that all sort of depends on which raisin you take out of the box, right? How you spin it. We were married for 37 years. People used to ask us how we managed, being married and all, working off the side of the road together, sharing a little trailer. The truth is, nobody knows if they're happily married. All they know is that it's the thing they've been doing every day for the last 37 years. Yeah, we used to have a strict division of labor back when we worked together. She would raise the grape from the time it appeared on the vine, and I'd step in as soon as it was time to start drying them. Our customers used to have fun with that. I'm the dry one, they'd say. Grapes attract a certain kind of person person who likes to tell jokes. Wine enthusiasts, tourists, people who like to talk.
There's a photo in that glove box there, of us, standing in front of our trailer. It was in a magazine. One of those stories about vanishing farmers that always pulls heartstrings with the rest of the country. Well, I never opened the glove box myself. It's kind of a superstition of mine. But help yourself. Hey, where'd you get that? That's not her. And that guy there, he looks like you. I don't know. I was gonna ask you the same question, Copernicus. Did he... Who gave this to you? Well, I guess it belongs to you. You'd better hold on to it. What woman? Well, oh, her. Well... Hard to say. I wouldn't lose any sleep over it. What's that black thing in the glove box, anyway? See anything interesting there? A windmill, eh? No idea. Say, want to hear a joke? Why did the raisin take the prune to the dance? He couldn't get a date. <laughs> hey, that reminds me. It's almost 4.30. You'll like this. It's my favorite. I once knew the hostess, Darlene. She used to change the tires on my truck on Highway 51. Welcome to another interstate riddle hour. Here's our first riddle. Keep your eyes peeled, all you blacktop carpetbaggers. I fly, yet I have no wings. I cry, yet I have no eyes. Darkness follows me. Lower light I never see. Gatekeeper forever bound. He opens and shuts with a similar sound. Very good. I don't know why I listen to this every day. Damn questions are rigged. I never get them. Says the guy who never knew what pressure to keep his tires at. Hey! Having fun? Want to keep going? Great. Here's another one. Take one out and scratch my head. I am now black, but once was red. What am I? Need some help? Take one out and scratch my head. I am now black, but once was red.
Need some help? Check your backpacks, friends. The answer could be hiding inside. Well done. Okay, here's a tough one. I have four wings but cannot fly. I never laugh and never cry. On the same spot I'm always found, toiling away with little sound. What am I? Need some help? Round and round we go, people. our last riddle. He lies without touching the ground. Oh, come on, Darlene. Damn it, Darlene. I should have tipped her better when she changed the tires. She's been out to get me ever since. Look, she isn't being straight with you, kid. Check the photo, Copernicus. The photo in your bag. Then you'll see. <sighs> She's in trouble, Copernicus. You must help her. Ah, things like that happen all the time on this highway. It's nothing to lose your scrunchie over. Kid, I am sorry about your girlfriend. But I had nothing to do with it. It's just the opposite. I was sent to protect you. From yourself. You picked this car every bit as much as I chose to stop for you. You picked this car, picked me, not to feel anything. Kid, just let it go. There's nothing for you down that road. Nothing but hurt. Look, I admit I lied, but only about one thing. Yeah, we've met. Twice, in fact. Sure. You showed up at my trailer park taking photos. At first, I was a bit suspicious, since there were plans to kick us out and develop the trailer park into some kind of shopping center. But then it became clear that you'd been sent here by a magazine to do one of those stories about vanishing farmers that always pulls heartstrings with the rest of the country. The woman in the photo? No, I didn't actually meet her. I just know what you told me about her. She was backpacking around Europe without you, and you? You weren't taking it so well. Oh, I know a lot about you. I know about the phone number in the matchbook. I know you didn't show it to me. 
Kid, I told you. You don't want to go down that road. Well, there's one more lie I told you. We're not number one anymore in raisin production. We were surpassed last year by Turkey. Well, what's that they say in that Tom Cruise movie? The one where he's a bartender? Everything ends badly or it wouldn't end at all? I wasn't afraid of the truth either, back then. My wife, when she got the x-rays, when she knew, she decided to spare my feelings. Didn't tell me anything. Hid the x-rays in one place I'd never suspect, because it was so obvious. It stayed closed until today, until you came along. And that's what you liked about me when we met, when you came to take those photos. You said you admired my fortitude. I had to look up at least one of those words in the dictionary. Turns out that you just meant my not feeling every little thing that's gone wrong with me. Well, that's life as a raisin farmer. We're not known for live casting our power ballots. Each raisin is a little setback that you've learned to live with. You don't dwell on it or try too hard to remember. I wish it was that simple, kid. Hey, Chief. Why don't you have a look here? He appeared on this highway about the same time you did. I guess he's part of what you're running from. Not sure. You can't see him directly. He only shows up in mirrors, windows, pictures. Well, we haven't talked yet about the second time we met. That's the thing. It's a little hard to explain. Better if I just take you there. It's just a quick detour. We'll be there in a minute. A man travels along a road until he reaches a gate at the top of a hill. The road has been long and straight so far, and the going has been easy. But now the man can't go any further, so he takes a seat by the road to rest. The man waits, and after a length of time that seems neither short nor long, the gate opens and a guard appears. The man asks the guard for entry, but the guard says he cannot let him enter at the moment. The man thinks for a second and asks if he will be allowed through later. It is possible, says the guard, but not now. 
The gate now stands slightly open, and the man tries to look through it longingly. His journey has been easy so far, and he misses the feeling of the open road. The guard notices and laughs. Even if you could gain entry, there are many gatekeepers after me. Some are much stronger than me, and I'm afraid to look upon them. So there the man waits, for days, months, years, waiting to enter. One day, when he's given up hope of entering, a single question occurs to him, one he has not thought of before. Why, he wonders aloud, are there no other travelers along this road? All these years, no one but myself has waited in front of this gate. The answer to this question comes from a voice near his shoulder. It is you who made this gate, says a bird perched nearby. So it exists for no one but you. But why? asks the traveler. Why would I choose to stop here? The bird answers after hungrily eating a crust of bread from the man's hand. After this point, the road becomes less straight. It splinters like the tree in which I live, splitting into dozens, hundreds of branches. The path becomes impossibly narrow and frail, and crowded with the view of other paths one could have taken. There's only one point ahead on the road where all paths converge, where all points join, where the light shines through skin and through lies, but it's never been reached by one of your kind, a traveler who walks on feet. Shoo, cries the guard, chasing the bird away. Don't listen to his nonsense. Having said this, he takes a seat next to the traveler, but not before closing the gate, forever. So when you think about it, who knows how long we've been sitting here, just like this, on this road. Take it from me. It's better to face things with, what's it called again? Fortitude. Better not to feel too much. <clears throat> Want a raisin? See? You're getting used to them. Life is like a box of raisins. <laughs> That's some Forrest Gump type wisdom for you right there. Here, I'll leave the box open for you. Help yourself. Look, hooded crows all along this road. I have to chase these for my farm every harvest. They look hungry. Didn't get much peck out of this last harvest.
Look, hooded crows all along this road. Road. I have to chase these for my farm every harvest. You don't want to do that, kid. These birds are unpredictable. There's no telling what they'll do once they start swarming. Get enough of these crows together and it's big trouble. They look hungry. Didn't get much peck out of this last harvest. You're making a mistake, kid. You don't know where they're taking you. Look, I'll help you. I'll help you figure out what happened when she came back from Europe. Look, I get that you're mad, and I don't blame you. But, but, you don't know what's out there, kid. What other drivers on this road are? Stay with me, and things will play a whole lot safer. All right, I guess you made your choice. Don't blame me for what happens next. Now you've done it. They've taken control of the car. I don't know, Copernicus. Why don't you ask them? My farm, Copernicus. I had a funny feeling. The moment you looked through those binoculars. Well, they're pulling us around in circles. They're afraid of the scarecrows I put up here last summer. They want to take us, take you, I suppose, to that windmill in the middle. You need to rotate the scarecrows. See if you can find something in this car that might do the trick. That's it, kid. Now, more of the same. Almost there. That's it, kid. For you. They have a way of leaving gifts once you've fed them. Often something shiny or a piece of string.
I'm going away for two months. I'll be back before you know it. It's practically a cliche. Going to Europe to have new experiences, and yeah, it's corny. But maybe find myself. I guess I'm just worried that you'll find yourself but lose me along the way. I'll be back before you know it. Promise. Here's a security deposit. What a weird box. Did you win this at the circus? It's great, right? I'll send you something special from Europe to put inside, so you know I'm thinking of you. And then we have our road trip together when I get back. You won't miss me anyway. You have plenty to keep you busy. Like that job in California. The story about the... The vanishing grape farmers. You're right. I'm worrying too much. I love it. Does it lock? In some other world, it must, but not here. Okay, trade you a memory box for your Polaroid. Say cheese. Well, now that you know how it started, it doesn't make the next step any easier, does it? Listen, I disapprove of just about every choice you've made on this trip. But I like you, kid, and I can see you've made up your mind. If you want to find your girlfriend, if you want to find out what happened, if you really want to go there, You've got to find that box. I don't know, kid. But find that box and the key. Open the box before it's too late. Well, this is where I say goodbye. Unless you want to help transport four bushels across. Nah. Just remember, there are many more gates ahead and many more guards. I'm pretty much the friendly drunken uncle of the bunch. Well, good luck to you, kid. Oh, one more thing. What did the grape say when he got run over by the car? Nothing. He just gave a little whine. <laughs> Good luck with your search. It's the second house on the right here. No, wait. The third. Don't you remember where it is? I thought you spent your whole childhood here. Do you know what put us on top of the food chain? Do you know? And please, don't say opposable thumbs. Plenty of animals have those. Uh... Possums, koalas, something called the waxy monkey leaf rock. They're nothing special. Forget about thumbs, okay? Memory is what put us here. So many of our dreams are set in the places where we used to live. We want to see them, visit them again. There should be a rule, a kind of a social convention. The old apartment rule. Now it works like this. We can show up any place we used to live and simply explain, oh, I used to live here. There's nothing strange about it. The people who live there just throw open their doors and invite us in to have a look around. So we can go back home again. So we can be whole. Hey, are you keeping an eye out? 
Oh dear. I didn't mean to put you to sleep with my talking. No, 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 no offense taken. I've been told I have a way of putting my students to sleep as well. Uh, well... We're looking for Asper Street. And at least it used to be called. The problem is, is that a few... A few years ago, they rearranged all the letters of the street signs in this uh, neighborhood. Very impractical. Practical. Uh, I didn't catch your name. Time hops. Yes, that's what everyone calls me. Everyone except my students, of course. No, 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 just a second. Let's find this Asper Street, please, before we begin our inquiries. Like I say, they might have rearranged the letters a bit. So, we're on our way. Now, now, there was something you wanted to ask. Yes, then it's going to turn out that big surprise. I do know you. <laughs> A person trapped in the radio? Oh, yes. We've all met you along this highway. Now, I picked you up because I could tell you're looking for something. Something you've lost. Now, we're all looking for something on this road. I've never met anyone who wasn't. My dog. Well, she's been missing for a long time now. Hops, like me. Stupid idea, naming a dog after yourself. <laughs> they constantly think they're being trained. Every time someone you know stops you in the street. Made her a little bit high-strung. So... Vern mentioned this problem you have. Uh, with a photo. So, you're looking for her. What happened to her? Well, a, a singe photograph is never a good sign. I'm sorry, though. You don't remember anything? Well, I can help you with one part. You two came by my house, yes? See, that's... That's my silo, there in the background. Yes, <laughs> I've got a lot of dogs. After a while, the kitchen got completely full. Well, I'm not very good at getting rid of things, as you can see. Anyway, I invited you two in and put the kettle on the stove, but you never wound up making it through the front door. There was some kind of argument. Uh, she suddenly had to take a call. You got impatient. Well, I got the feeling there was something more behind it. Uh, but, you know, who knows?
Relationships between adult humans are not my strong suit. If you want to know what happened to her, why don't you just ask her yourself? You haven't asked me yet where we're headed. The warehouse of lost things. Impressed? Okay, it's this warehouse that contains everything you've ever lost in your life. You can find anything there, even feelings, but you only get 15 minutes to look. Yes, only 15 minutes. It really threw me the last time I was there. I got distracted by some mittens yeah, I had as a kid. Left them at a bus stop sometime in the mid-60s. After that, my parents bought those things that clip your mittens to your coat so it wouldn't happen again. Well, uh, why not? Shamanic tribes of the Amazon believe that in order to heal, you have to journey into the other world, find the thing you've lost among the spirits, and bring it back. Now, and to think about all the things we misplace. Atlantis, huh? And no, no, no. we lost an entire city once. Why shouldn't we get a second chance just to go back and retrieve some of the things we've left behind? I suppose. Well, I've never looked for people. It definitely works for pets, though. I found several of my dogs there when they've run away from time to time. Stick with me, you'll see. Just keep your eyes peeled. Now, if I remember correctly, it's only about another 20 minutes from here. It's nothing, I'm just wondering about this green light. Are you one of these people who's good with cars? I was hoping you might know. I never saw it before until you got into the car. What? Us? Stop here? No, I, I think we'll wait to find a mechanic someplace. Perhaps that part-time quiz show hostess. Ah, the green light, the epic sense of man's urgency, the future that keeps receding from us. Yes, I suppose you've read The Great Gatsby, too. It's probably nothing major, just a reminder to get something checked. But what do I know? I'm not the technical sort. Oh, we could ask Lola. Well, she's very good with these things. <laughs> uh, probably not, young man. Lola's a kind of oracle. She's given me lots of good advice, right from where you're sitting. Besides, more to the point, I'd like to check with her about directions, just to make sure we're pointed the right way. See if you can find her here. Well, she's quite small, you see. A toy bear. Now, I found her at the World's Fair in Barcelona, 1929, at an exhibition about alchemy. Lola Montes. Mm, but she's somewhere in this car now. Feel free to rummage around as much as you need. Interesting. Looks familiar. There she is. Ah, Lola. 
Put her on the glove box lid, my boy. That's where she likes to speak. Yes, sometimes directly, sometimes in more of a roundabout way. Lola Dearest. Now, I'm here with this young fellow here, and, well, the warehouse. Now, it's left up here on Concord Avenue, right? She's not ready to talk yet. She's lonely, and she misses her friends. Fellow memory objects. That's her preferred company. Trinkets like her, lost and found many times over the years, imbued with the memories of everyone who's ever claimed them as their own. Get enough of them together, and things start to get interesting. The present moment peels back like wallpaper to reveal the past behind it and the future ahead. Her and her friends, yes. She's very good. She even remembers my dog's names. About nine months. Well, no, I, I couldn't look for her these last months. I got a bit detained. Yes, it all started when I was buying some tube socks. I was on the escalator, trying to leave the mall. Do you ever have that thing where you buy something, and you know it's the right thing, but you start worrying about it just as you're leaving? I was staring at the socks, wondering if they were the right length. Now, I knew they were, but I must have not been paying attention. Because suddenly, I slipped down that crack at the end of the escalator, right where you're supposed to step off. Yes, exactly the thing kids are always worrying about, getting sucked down the escalator. Well, first quite quickly, and then very slowly. Before you know it, you're banging around in the chute, and then you land at the Bowling Green.
Keep it in my pocket. Oh, look. Let's give it to her, please. Let's see if she's feeling more sociable. Lola, dear, are you feeling more chatty now? She says her... She says her tea party is still missing two guests. You see, we just need to find two more of her friends. Of course. My audiobook about the Gulag makes perfect sense. Only one more object to find now. Oh, well, it's something I used to play for her in the car an awful lot. There was this one story she used to adore. The story? Well... Well, it's about two guys. In a way, two guys like us, who are side by side, both waiting for something to happen. Now, these two fellows were both prisoners in the Gulag. Do you know what the Gulag was? So, the Gulag camps were off in the middle of nowhere. Nowhere. You, you could escape. But then, what would you do? Well, you'd starve to death. <laughs> so there was a trick. It was called the sandwich. Now, say you and I wanted to escape the Gulag. Two guys like us, friends. We recruit another guy, a third guy, to escape with us. Now, preferably a nice, fat, buttery guy. The fat guy was called the sandwich, because the idea is that the two buddies, us, we kill and eat the sandwich on the way home to survive. <laughs> it's great, right? Hmm. Uh, maybe I didn't tell the story right. Well, I haven't told you the best part yet. Well, there was one time these two guys escaped with a sandwich. But there was a problem. They finished the sandwich too soon. Didn't ration him out long enough. He was all gone. And they still had days to walk through the Siberian tundra. These guys were great friends, but they were also hardened criminals. And so they knew that whichever one of them fell asleep would be eaten by the other one. But the code of criminal friendship didn't allow them to acknowledge this. 
So they had to keep playing it, you know, nonchalant, chatting about stuff, whatever people talked about back then, trudging through the snow. Who? Oh, those two convicts. Oh, no. One of them fell asleep and got eaten by the other. But it's their ability to keep face that I always think about. Their honor that couldn't admit any suspicion. I mean, you don't totally trust me, right? Well, I can see you looking out the corner of your eyes. You don't think I know where I'm going. Listen, can I ask you an honest question? Okay, here it goes. This girlfriend of yours, why is it so important for you to find her? I mean, okay, the burnt photo, damsel in distress, etc., etc. I, I, I get it. But if you can't remember anything about her... We'll always have this. See? This is Lola's influence. <laughs> it's starting to work. You feel it, right? All you have to do is find your way back to me. Let's keep him as our pet. You two didn't even mean to capture it. It just flew into the empty bottle. Well... For your sake, I hope so. I think you know. You're like me. The past is the only place left for us. When we were young, we thought the past... We thought the past could only tie us down. Everything we wanted, freedom, lay ahead on the open road. Well, that was yesterday, and this is today. Now the past is all you've got, and the future is full of pain. Well, when we get to the warehouse, remember to keep an eye out for a firefly. Firefly in a glass bottle. We shouldn't be hard to spot. They tend to keep that place pretty dimly lit. Looks like Vern started doing some advertising. I guess he's finally decided. Finally decided to take matters into his own hands. Normally, he's so stoic, letting things take their own course, never complaining. Well, he was just trying to help you. Seems like you can use it. You're totally infected with this frontier spirit, am I right? Always move ahead, always continue along the two-lane blacktop. Maybe Vern exaggerates a bit, but at least he knows these parts. You should turn back here. No, I'm serious. It's just Lola. Blast nothing. Someone, someone changed the street signs. Him. He's been here. I swear it was a second left past the red house. But don't worry. Don't worry. We'll find it. It, it's right around here. I just want to find my dog. Ah, oh, these streets all look the same. This is worse than falling down an escalator. Uh, here, take this. See if you can figure out which way is east.
Are you sure? I mean, look through it and see if it tells you which way is east. No luck, huh? Well, maybe it does something useful. we can get out of this maze now and head on our way. Lola, dear, this young man and I, we're looking for... She's saying something. Something about you. A car crash? No, no, no. He's, he's fine. Well, just look at him. She thinks you've caused some kind of accident. I can vouch for this young man, Lola. Well, he's been with me almost the entire afternoon. She says she knows who you are, and that she wants to help you. She's gathered these memory objects for a purpose, for you to put together. To bring you earthly knowledge, she says. Hmm. Hmm. Very peculiar. Thank you. 
Well, isn't that something? It's alchemy, my boy. Art. A camera. Your means for turning water into wine. Redeeming the past. Renewing memories. Well, nothing needs redeeming more than the American suburbia. Now, am I right? Americana. Where the surreal intermingles with the mundane. Here's your chance, my boy. Create a photo journal. Win some awards. Fireflies, sent directly from your memory, I suppose, to guide you. Oh, hello there, Lampyridae. Oh, ho, 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 those sideburns. Don't let my students get a hold of that. I think they're not done yet. They want you to take more photos. They want to show us the way, but they can only do it through photos. Gee, I didn't notice him standing back there. Should we go back and pick him up? Who is that guy anyway? You don't sound very glad to see him. I think they're not done yet. They want you to take more photos. Trading post, huh? Interesting proposition. I expect you get something rather valuable in exchange for this particular camera.
No! No! My dog! How? If I can't find her in the past, I don't have a chance of finding her in the future. Oh, that was just nonsense I said to cheer you up. I just want to find my dog. Is that a dog collared in the street? I, I, I suppose, but what's happened to her? She's invisible. She's lost in time since the warehouse closed its doors. That's it. Capture her with that camera of yours. Oh, you're a good dog, Hops. You ran past the funny mailbox through a door, and we'll find you, don't worry. We've got to find that house. That's the one. Hang on! Look, the silo. That's my house. Funny how you can come upon the very place you live and not even recognize it. All depends on the angle you... Hey! There's Hops! Thank goodness. Oh, I've almost got her back. Listen, I didn't realize the warehouse was closed, but we must do it again. Now, you have to promise me, pinky promise, that we're going to meet again in a year, okay? This same spot. We won't exchange contact info or anything like that. We'll keep it old school. Meet here in one year's time. What do you say? Wise plan, young man. People like to say that you can't live in the past. Well, look at me. I'm living proof to the contrary. Look, your fireflies are back. Seems like they're waiting to give you one last memory. Hops, wait for me! I just think it would be fun to ring the bell. I lived here my entire childhood. I feel like I have the right. Sure, but we better make it quick. Lots of driving to do still. Hello. What can I do for you two? This is gonna sound funny, but... Not at all. Come right in. Oh, sorry. I've got to take this. To me, it's perfect here. 
I don't understand what's so great about our life in Seattle. Don't you ever think about making a change? Sure, but this isn't the kind of change I had in mind. I get it. You grew up here, so it's your baseline of normal. But this just isn't my idea of an adventure. Adventure. It's just, it's real here. It's a good place to grow up, to have children. At least it was for me. I can always find myself here. Same stars, same fence, same mailbox. Hey, you need a ride someplace? 